Welcome to this masterclass on the physiotherapy management for patients with migraine. My name is Kerstin Dütke. I'm a professor of physiotherapy at the University of Lübeck in the north of Germany. You are classified as somebody having migraine if you've had at least five attacks that fulfill the following criteria. Headache needs to last for four to 72 hours if left untreated. And it has to have two or four characteristics. It needs to be either unilateral, has a pulsating quality, is of moderate or severe pain intensity, and it gets worse with physical activity. So two of these um, have to be present um, as uh, characteristics of migraine. Additionally, you need to have at least one of the associated symptoms. And these could be nausea with or without vomiting. It can be photophobia or phonophobia. And then then doesn't have to be any other explanation. So if there's any other explanation for your headaches, um, then um, this might be either another or that might be true too. So the prodromal phase, this is the 48 hours before the headache comes on. And part of this phase might be aura if um, in patients where, that have migraine with aura. But it can also be um, very unspecific types of symptoms. So feeling a little bit more, I don't know, a bit grumpy, um, a bit more tired, um, craving specific foods, being more sensitive to any sort of sim simulation. And what they found is that in the days preceding the actual headache in those 48 hours before the headache comes on, certain structures, and namely the hypothalamus and its associated structures, became hypersensitive to all those stimuli provided during um, the scanning time. More things that we know about the pathophysiology, and here you can see the hypothalamus and you can see how it speaks to all the other structures in the brain. Um, this is usually a picture that's, that you get shown when you ask about the pathophysiology of migraine. And one of the mysteries about migraine is that some people say that if you haven't got aura, you haven't got migraine. But this is absolutely not true. Migraine with aura is only one of those 30 subtypes of migraine. And it's a lot less common than migraine without aura. As physiotherapists, we want to know whether the neck contributes to migraine symptoms and to migraine suffering. And um, indeed, a very large percentage of people who have migraine report neck pain before, during or after the attack. An explanation why the neck and migraine could work together is um, a hypothesis which is called the trigeminal cervical complex hypothesis. And it says that afferents of our cervical system, so the spinal nerves of C1, C2 and C3, um, attach to the trigeminal nuclei at the same sort of anatomical region where afferents of the trigeminal nerves are connected. And because of this anatomical proximity, um, the brain then does not know when a uh, nociception is sort of coming into the system, where this nociception is coming from. This is and the third study that they did at the same university in the same work group was that they stimulated extracranial tissue. Um, they uh, put either electrical stimulation onto um, a, um, the temporal and the suboccipital muscles. Or they injected capsaicin, which again is sort of a stimulating substance. It causes pain. It's the stuff where, where the peppers get their sort of hot sensation from. And what they found is that um, the dura mater releases a specific neuropeptide, which is called CGRP, or the long name is calcitonin gene-related peptide, um, is released upon stimulation of a peripheral muscle. And that's interesting because it means that the muscle provokes something on the dura that we know occurs highly frequently in migraine attacks. A semicogenic headache is obviously because the cause is in the neck is a secondary headache. Um, both migraine and semicogenic headache are usually unilateral. 
But the migraine is shorter. And in migraine, you have these very clear attacks of 4 to 72 hours, which is not so clear in cervicogenic headache. I'm interested in is, is there a cervicogenic component? So why do we find all these musculoskeletal um, dysfunctions on people with migraine? Because it doesn't seem to make sense if migraine is triggered by something in the brain. We had positive findings on manual joint testing. Um, we had a reduced um, activation of the deep cervical flexors using the cranial cervical flexion test. And we had um, positive reproduction of pain referred to the head in a large percentage of patients, probably around about one third, especially in the phases of the migraine. And especially in that phase where persons don't have a headache yet, but the hypothalamus is already hypersensitive, that could be a phase where people respond largely to all of these um, tests that we are doing. Another really interesting study is this one because it tells us that this hypersensitivity is not only restricted to pain perception, but it's also found in other stimulation types. And <laughs> I'm a bit distracted by this roller coaster video because um, what we found is that if you let migraine patients see a roller coaster stimulation like the one that you're seeing now and compare this to people who don't have migraine, then people with migraine will find this a lot more disturbing. They will report a lot more dizziness and a lot more nausea when um, you know, watching the video. Another interesting study is, um, or an interesting aspect that you probably want to know, does it help if we as physios treat migraine patients and um, if we use, for example, manual therapy and exercise. And um, here's a study by um, Munoz Gomez et al. published in um, 2021. And they found that um, the frequency of episodes as measured by the migraine disability assessment tools is reduced with manual therapy and exercise. So this is good news for us. We can contribute to migraine management. It does make sense to recommend what's in the guidelines. Um, and in the guidelines, it says aerobic exercise, um, maybe also strength training, but this is based on a very low level of evidence. But um, it looks as if strength training is also beneficial. Um, relaxation exercises, um, any type of relaxation, it doesn't have to be post isometric. Relaxation can be sort of anything that uh, patients prefer. Um, is definitely something to recommend and anything that's regular. So what about trigger management? I mean, triggers are something that everybody talks about. And um, the problem is that um, <laughs> a lot of researchers have tried to use those common triggers. To I hope you've learned a little and I hope it contributes to your clinical management of migraine patients.